Now, before we talk about deploying the model to Google Cloud, I want to cover Image Data Generator API. In part three of the video, we built the model, part two and three actually, we used the data augmentation layer in Keras to train our model. Now, I received some comment in that video saying that, why don't you use Image Data Generator? And based on your feedback and demand, I'm going to cover Image Data Generator API in this video. So what we are doing in this session is actually we are building, we are training the model once again, which we did in part two and three, same thing, but using Image Data Generator API. Now this API allows you to do data augmentation and data loading. It is quite convenient. So we'll see how it works in detail. And in the next video, we will do Google Cloud deployment. So again, just to summarize, I have this notebook open where we use data augmentation and resize rescale explicitly as the layers in our model. Now I will do the same thing using more convenient approach. And if you Google TensorFlow image data generator, say TensorFlow image data generator, you find a documentation where you can create this class object where you can specify all your augmentation as an argument. For example, you want to increase brightness. You know, you can specify this brightness range, horizontal flip, vertical flip, rescale. You can do so many things. So let me just go ahead and create a variable of image data generator. So I've already imported it. I'm going to create a variable of image data generator and I will specify different parameters. For example, the first parameter will be rescaling. So I want to rescale. I would say rescale. Every image has RGB value from zero to 255. And I want to divide that by 255. In our previous notebook, what we were doing was using this, this specific layer for rescaling. And now you're doing the same thing here using this particular argument. The second one I will do is horizontal flip. I will say this and a rotation range. I will use it. Let's say 10, you know, by 10 degree, I want to rotate my images. You can use more transformation, but I just want to keep things simple. That's why just using uh, these many transformation. And then the second thing, once your generator is created, so let me assign a variable to it. Now you need to load the images directly from the dire directory on the disk. So here there is a method called flow from directory. Now flow from directory is a very, very convenient method. And let me just show you how you can use it. So train data set, train data generator, flow from directory. Here you specify directory path. Now, our directory, if you look at it, we have just single directory with three classes. We need to think about train, uh, splitting the, the images into training and test and validation data set as well. Now, one thing I don't like about TensorFlow API is this particular method allows you to divide your data set into training and validation data set. So let me see, where is it? Subset, yeah. So you can specify subset and you can say my subset is either training and validation, but I need taste as well. So if TensorFlow guys are watching this video, please add taste as well, you know, here, because otherwise it becomes inconvenient. So since that support is not there, I'm going to use a tool called split folders. So I have already installed the tool on my computer. So let me just show you. I previously ran it. So you just do pip install split folders and that will install this tool. And I, I, I will show you what I'm doing with this tool. So here, when you run this command, you can say split my plant village folder into train test and validation. I want to split 
this particular folder this folder into three data sets train taste and validation and the ratio that I want to keep is 70% is training 1% 10% is validation 20% is test and my output folder name is data set so when I run this command it will become very clear to you what this is doing so here's it created a new folder called data set now see beautiful it has taste train validation three different folders and every folder has now this individual classes now if you look at the images in this folder there are 200 items in taste because there are total thousand items initially if you look at my original directory here early blight has thousand correct and in my test I said 20% so 20% of thousand is how much 200 correct so here if you go to test see 200 images then if you do training 700 because 70% we said 70% are training images and 1070% is 700 so now I have these three folder split into these three categories and I can just say this folder is data set train so that will be my training generator so let me assign a variable to this training generator and I will specify a couple of more parameters so my target size is what each of my images is 256 by 256 correct and just to because I know I'm going to use this a lot so just storing it in a variable makes sense then the batch size will be 32 32 batch size is pretty much standard and the class mode is sparse why sparse because the labels I want the labels to be 0 1 and 2 see here class mode so class mode can be categorical if it is categorical it will generate uh, one hot encoded vector I don't want hot encoded vector I want simple sparse vector you know 0 1 2 and I'll just show you how this works let me do one thing I will mention save to directory as well because I want to show you how the augmented images look like so I will create a new directory called augmented images so here let me just make a new directory augmented images so you can see here see augmented images and it will save the augmented images into that directory now you found 1506 images and it created a training generator now if you don't know how generator works in Python I would suggest that you go to YouTube click code basics generator click on this video code basics generator you will get an understanding on how generator works but just to give you a brief idea generator on fly it is like training data set you know TF data set that we studied before it will dynamically load images from directory it will do transformation because it's image data generator all this transformation and it will return those images in a for loop so generator is something you can use it in a for loop uh, let's let's just run that so for something you can do for something in train generator now that something is basically image batch and label batch just like TF dataset so you will get this image batch will be 32 images this will be 32 labels which will tell you whether the plant is healthy or late blight or late blight you know one of the three values 0 1 2 and this loop will just keep on going so you need to just break because you know it's a generator it just keeps on generating so I will maybe you know first print a shape just to show you so every image batch 32 images 
x and y is this for each image is 256 256 3 is for rgb now when you run this you will notice one thing that in augmented images it created see 32 images total and these are augmented so some of them are rotated you see this one is probably vertical horizontal flip uh, this is also horizontal flip i think so they're rotated there is a flip and so on okay so rescale or rotation range horizontal flip you can specify more augmentation as per your convenience but each image basically let's say if i have to print each image it will be a numpy array three-dimensional three-dimensional array and see this is the most important thing now each value is between 0 and 1 it is not between 0 and 255 because of this argument now to do the same thing here in our previous notebook remember we had to do this but now that thing is taken care of and when you run it again by the way see this image directory will keep on growing now you have 64 items so make sure i just had this directory just to show you but ideally you should not have it you should delete it okay it will just work on fly on fly it will just keep on generating it so i will control execute this again control enter if you have that directory and if you have that specified here the directory will keep on growing which might be bad for your hard disk all right now i will do the same thing for validation data set the directory name is different here and you will do the same thing for taste data generator as well and again the directory name is different so just a simple copy paste i created three generator train validation and taste Now you can directly build a model. So I'm just going to copy paste some code because we are using the same model architecture, convolutional neural network architecture that we used in a previous notebook. The only difference here is I have put some input layer here and remaining things are kind of same. And you control execute, you will print model summary. Okay, because all parameters are trainable because we are not using any transfer learning here. So you can see the model summary, um, model compile, same thing. I'm just doing copy paste from the previous notebook and then you do model.fit. Now here something changes. So in model.fit, you will specify your train generator. And in step, per epoch so you need to specify step per epoch otherwise train generator just keeps on generating new images and usually the guideline is step per epoch is basically how many batches you are running so one batch size is what 32 okay 32 is one batch size and total number of images let's say in train data set is x so x divided by 32 is the value that you want to put here so how many images are there in our train data set? Well, 1506. So now we have total 47 steps for training. Then the batch size is 32. Validation data comes through validation generator. And then val there are validation steps, by the way. Validation steps would be same thing. Y divided by 32, where Y is number of images in validation data set. Validation has 215 images. Okay, around six steps I want here. And then verbose is one, and I'm going to try 20 epochs 
I tried this previously. I'm not going to lie, but this is something you decide based on some experimentation. Okay. So then you will run your training and I'm not going to run it right now because it's, it's going to take time. So I'm just going to show you the, the notebook, which I, which I ran before, you know, which I used it before. So I ran this and I got around 97% accuracy and my validation accuracy is 95 and you want to always test your model on test data set before deploying it because test data set is something model has not seen so far when you run that you get 97% accuracy which is pretty good and then you will plot you know your usual uh, the same thing that we did in the in the part 2 and 3 which is plotting training and validation accuracy that that code doesn't change so i'm not going to go over it again you know uh, and then you can run prediction on sample images again it's a generator so previously in a data set we used to do something like take but here you just use it like in a for loop it's an iterator generator okay and you ran the prediction uh, the all these functions are same with little change that's why i'm not going over it but i ran it on a couple of images and I found that, okay, most of the predictions were true. If the actual image is early blight, my predicted image was also early blight and so on. And then I saved the model in H5 format. Okay, now what is H5 format? So here, if you, again in, in Google, if you say TensorFlow save model, you will find save model documentation and this is this format called hdf5 now this is the old format right now they they use usual you know they, they save it to directory but what i like about this format is the entire model gets saved into one file previously when we saved our models you all know that our models were saved like this in it was like directory this is my one saved model this is my second but every model is a directory but what i just did is i saved it in this one file called potatoes.h5 and that's the file i will be using to deploy it to google cloud in google cloud i will deploy this file and we will make prediction um, using the Google Cloud function that is running on that in, in the cloud. All right, so I hope you like this video. If you are loving this series so far, please share it with your friends and always practice along with me. Only practice can help you. If you just watch the video, it's not gonna be useful. So as I am coding on YouTube, you make a pause, you write code, you practice with me and that way you can learn effectively. In the next video, We'll deploy this H5 format model to Google Cloud.